Here's the space I had available to do the translation relay race. Here's how I've slightly rearranged the room. I've made these two tables into ribosomes and I have them labeled so they could remember what they are. There's another ribosome. And then over here I made these two tables my Golgi bodies. I'll go over the stuff that's there in just a second. There's another Golgi body. Okay, so I've also set out ahead of time the cards for the students, so all they have to do is come in and pick them up. Uh, this is just a little bit tricky in that you may not have an exact match with the number of cards and students because uh, you have to prepare this strip, that messenger RNA, ahead of time, and uh, you don't know if there's going to be students missing. So maybe a student might have to play two uh, colors or something but so these are all ready for them to come in and pick up and what they're going to have is two cards that are transfer RNA and you see the anti-codon and I give them two because it's really important for them to know that there are often more than one combinations that will code for that amino acid. The amino acids are represented by little paper strips that we're going to cut uh, taped together at the ribosome. So each student has one of these, different color for each amino acid. And then what they're going to do is bring a piece of colored paper over when the codon is called that matches the anticodon. Let me go over here and let you look at the messenger RNA. So I just made the start ahead of time. It's methionone, but there's only one. So that wouldn't be enough for a student. So I just wrote start. You could even use the START, AUG, which codes for methionine and which will appear only once because it's only at the start. But you could kind of emphasize this little scientific point if you wanted to and use one card as your demo, match it up, and then put that on there. So you'll have just one color that you're not using for anything else. You can use that as a demo if you'd like, or you can just ignore it and start right here. It's up to you. So the first one that I would call would be AAG. Now the student has the anticodon, and what they're going to listen for is UUC. So this is the tricky part. They're holding a card in their hand. They're going to have to match by listening. So even if the student understands what's going on and understands translation, it's still going to be a fun challenge for them. So you're going to have one person behind this ribosome. This is a great job for an adult, or you can have a student do it. And you're going to have one person sitting here. So you're going to have two callers. And then you're going to have two teams, two groups of students. Now, I didn't have mine sitting in the chairs. I told them to stand behind the table so that they can be free to run up and back. They will each have a chance to go up four times, the way I have it calculated in my messenger RNA, and you can uh, adjust uh, the messenger RNA code for the number of students. You could have just two amino acids and switch, or you could have more. So it's really up to you. So let's do a quick run through of what a player would do. The caller, who is invisible here, but will be somebody, will call out. AAG. And then this team, and it's tricky because they have to ignore that person and listen to this person. So somebody on this team has the match to AAG, which is going to be UUC. So they're going to look at their card and they're going to see if they have UUC. Let's see who has it. Ah, here it is over here. So this person is going to say, oh, I've got the match. They're going to take an amino acid and their transfer RNA, because the transfer RNA carries the amino acid. They're going to come over to the ribosome, lay it down, make sure it matches up, yep, and then place their amino acid right here. And then they will return and wait for their next turn. Meanwhile, the caller calls out the next one, UGU, and so what do we need? We need ACA. So the students look at their cards. Who's got ACA? 
I'm trying to see. Okay, ACA, here it is. So this is cysteine. ACA, so the person with ACA, again, is going to bring it over and lay it down, it matches, confirm the match, lay it down here, and then probably the person who's do the, doing the calling is gonna do this, will tape these two together. So when you're finished, you're going to have a long strip of colored paper that will represent our polypeptide. As soon as you have the polypeptide finished and you hit stop, I went ahead and put the AUC stop code on in, the team is going to work as a group. They're going to come and pick this up and carry it to the Golgi body. So this is going to be very cooperative. You're going to carry it over to the Golgi body and you will have set out a paper clip, enough, one per player, and they will take turns. Each will take one clip and they will fold the protein somehow. It doesn't matter how they do it. They can loop it and pin it like this, or they can fold a little part, or they can go like that and pin it here. It really doesn't matter as long as each player gets a chance to put one paper clip on and make one fold. So then you're going to end up with a folded protein. And then they all go over to the sugar station and you're going to have each one add a sugar tag with a clip. Now this is very non-specific. I have hexagons. Um, don't draw any conclusions from this scientifically. This is just a game. But it represents the fact that Golgi bodies often add sugar tags. So each student will put on one clip then when you have it glycosylated, imagine we've got this with sugar tags, then you need to package it into a vesicle, which we have here as a cardboard box. Put it into a vesicle, and then I provided uh, a large rubber band, one of these really big ones, you can wrap around the whole box, or you can tape it shut. And then you need to put a label on it, because the Golgi body labels things, we are going to send our vesicle outside the cell. Now we have our vesicle packaged and tagged and ready to ship outside the cell. And I told them ahead of time that outside of our cell is going to be through these doors. So then they just gave it a toss and that was the end of the game. And if we're playing competitively, the first team to get their box tossed here was the winner. Here's a cleanup and storage note. I made little envelopes for each of these cards because I know I'm going to reuse these. Now these you can't really reuse very well. I guess you could cut apart the long string, but they're just little colored slips, so I can always cut more. But I will put these into an envelope marked with the amino acid and then store the envelopes and they'll be ready to go next time I want to play.